2025 is a big year for the railway. It's the 200th anniversary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway, which is generally considered the world's first commercial railway venture. Celebrations are getting underway, so I decided to have a chat with Emma Robertson and Anthony Calls to find out what's being planned. Emma is the Railway 200 Programme Manager for GBRTT, and Anthony is Senior Curator for Rail Transport and Technology at the National Railway Museum. So I thought maybe, Anthony, you could just start by giving us a sense of what what is this anniversary all about? Why is it significant? Okay, well, perhaps to start with and save you all the uh, angry letters and comments, uh, we all know it's not actually 200 years of the railway in the UK and across the world. Railways began in the Middle Ages, in in mines, in in, in Middle Europe. And uh, the railway as a phenomenon came to the UK in about the 1560s in lead mines up in Cumbria. And and then there were networks of railways in South Wales, Shropshire, the northeast of England, wagonways for 200 years before the S&DR. But what we're marking is a seminal moment. You know, we like timelines. We like really important points on it. And, And the the birth of the Stockton Darlington Railway, the opening of the Stockton Darlington Railway in 1825 is a seminal moment. It's where we see the railway as a technology break out from short distance coal hauling into a long distance railway, which then sparks the growth of a network with branch lines coming off it and then becomes part of a much wider system. It's something that people had talked around from 1800. and There were ideas of how to make a railway network carrying people, but no one had actually carried it out until the Stockton and Darlington Railway. So what we're marking is a seminal moment where it's the birth of the modern railway as we know it. And so Emma, you're kind of part of the team that's coordinating all the railway companies and different railways coming together to celebrate this. So can you just give us a sense of how how is that uh, coming together happening? You know, how are you coordinating all those different things? And, um, and what are the sorts of things that we might actually get to see? Yeah, that's that's right. I'm sort of work in the the sort of campaign team for Railway 200, um, and really we began working on this uh, over 18 months ago, uh, understanding what actually we could use the anniversary for, as well as a celebration. Um, so we engaged with a lot of stakeholders and, and talked to them, and and really sort of bringing everyone together to sort of define how we could celebrate that year. Um, so it has been quite a, a lot of work to get that engagement going, get that buying, speaking to all the right people and really sort of creating sort of a big wider community behind Railway 200 with our team at the core of that. Um, so we, we coordinate that by obviously having regular forums to keep everyone engaged, but really that transition is is to ownership. So we create the, the framework, the brand, the tools, the ideas for then partners to go away to then decide really how they want to bring Railway 200 to life, what their story is, how they can get involved, how they celebrate their people, how they look to the future. Um, So it is about sort of empowering um, organisations to go away and do that. And and it's been really great to see that sort of happen and grow over the last sort of 18 months. For us, January was such a big month. um, And really for me, the, the whistle up, the global whistle up we coordinated on New Year's Day, really kind of created that moment for me and I I felt quite emotional actually about it because after so much work really realising is this thing are we going to do this are we actually going to create this year-long celebration to actually see it come together communities heritage railways the actual operating railway taking part as well because we wanted to make sure it wasn't just a heritage moment it was about the present as well and that's very important for us um but to see that all happen i i mean i went to a miniature railway in milton Keynes with my daughter on a on a on a rainy new year's day but everyone came out and it kind of felt like we were here and and this actually had support and momentum behind it so yeah, so, so January's been busy. The Royal Mint uh, revealed their coin and, and to see it out there because you're sworn to secrecy. So you, you're nervous about talking about these things. And we had the anniversary theme rail sale um, and now the merchandise range is on sale as well. So those are the kind of the big chunky items to, to give it, elevate that profile to then support all our partners um, doing a whole range of activities. Yeah, if, if I can chip in as well, I think what's put this um, celebration again sets it 
aside from everything else that's gone past is that this is truly national and international as well. Um, aside from the NRM, I have an involvement with the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum in West Africa. Um, they haven't had a railway operating since 1974, but they have a railway museum. They don't have a steam engine to whistle. So the kids all had whistles and, and trumpets and they whistled up. And, oh, and we saw, saw railways in Canada doing it as well. I think it was fab, wasn't it, Emma? So yeah, yeah, it, it really fab. is an international it's... cause for celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and yeah, so it was a, just a, a great moment with with so much more to come actually as well. Um, not only, like I said, the merchandise uh, yeah. range is now live. We've brought together all our rail industry charities for a charity campaign throughout the year about protecting rail memories for the future. So there's great ways in which everyone can uh, easy, easily fundraise fun, fundraise uh, for for the charities uh, during the year as well. So before we get too carried away with anything else, I have got to stop you and start talking about this merchandise because I'm really excited about this. So tell me, what are we going to see? I can see you're wearing little pin badges on you. Are these, yeah, I'm not sure how close be... we can get to the camera, but <laughs> there we are. Are these going to be for sale? They're already for sale, aren't they, Emma? <gasps> Are they really? ready to sell? Oh, yes, that was another another thing we did in, in January and working actually very closely with um, Anthony's team at the uh, National Railway Museum to develop that sort of logo based product range. Yeah, okay. um, there's going to be, um, there's a teddy that my daughter was very upset with that I had to send back because it was a sample. Oh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to buy one. And, <laughs> and, and, I think and, you need and, to show us the key ring as well. The key ring, yeah. There's a beautiful key ring actually um, that these are Apparently a really good sell it's really good quality but what's wow. really beautiful is that there's a ticket on it and we've custom you won't see it on this one because this is a sample but we've uh, customized the information on it so it's got the the, the relevant anniversary dates the destinations and things like that so little touches like that yeah. are, are really, a really nice collectible um sort of uh, range and it's That's all great. pocket money prices, isn't it? Not, not that we're turning this into a commercial, but you know, it, there, there's there's no barrier to people get, getting um, getting the souvenirs. I think that's a that's really great. lovely thing as well. So where, I mean, we'll put a link um, in the description and on our website, but where can people actually buy them from? Are they going to be available from, I presume, the museum, but will people see them at events, for example? Is that the plan? Um, it's they're available um, in locomotion in Shildon and the Rowan Museum in store and obviously on the Science Museum Group's shop um, and it really will be up for part up to partners whether they want to wholesale uh, I know Heritage Railways may well want to do that as well so yes there's obviously a possibility that they could then be retailed uh, by by other partners as well. Um, so the other thing that I think has really captured people's interest is the uh, exhibition train that you've mm -hmm. uh, you've obviously mentioned is going to happen I think it's called Inspiration is that right? That's correct, yes. So what can you tell us? I know it's not finished yet, but what can you tell us to just whet our appetites and get us excited? Uh, well, it will be a touring exhibition. Uh, it will be a four carriage exhibition and it will crisscross England, Scotland and Wales um, from the um, from the from this summer. Um, but I think the best thing is that actually I think in, in the coming weeks we're going to be able to say a bit more on that. Um, we've been working very closely with the National Railway Museum to create that exhibition. So it's 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 really exciting um, and we're just on the cusp of, oh, of, of releasing a bit more. Yeah, there are so things gonna... being signed off, aren't there? But we can't quite go public oh, just yet. A little bit longer, but in terms <laughs> of more information about where it's going and what you will see is coming very soon. Brilliant. OK. Um, so I think the other thing that lots of people got very excited when we uh, spoke about it on the show as soon as it was mentioned was the greatest gathering uh, that obviously mm -hmm. Alstom is organising. Is that something that is just an Alstom uh, kind of idea and concept or are you guys involved at all? And I presume you're going to be going, obviously. It, it's very much run by Alstom, but again, it will it will obviously br um, bring in lots of different parties to be involved because they want to um, gather around the largest temporary collection of rail uh, exhibits in a generation. So you can imagine this is going to be a really large scale event, which is in Derby, the home of the railway, as uh, the railway as well, the new home of the railway. So it, it's a really big deal for the area as well as Alstom and other sort of partners to come together. It, it's a big moment in the calendar. I mean, when I got the call last at the end of last year to say, Emma, we're going to do this, I was like, this is amazing. This is what 
the dream was. This is what we wanted, <laughs> is the rail industry to take hold of this. And the thing I think Alstom will be able to do is I think the whole thing will, will cover that past, present and future because it will bring heritage together. It's Alstom doing it today is the present. But by having that, it can inspire the future. You know, if you want to come and learn more about the railway, that's what Railway 200 is. We're lifting the curtain on the rail industry and showing all the wonderful things it does and inspiring young people to want to come and work in the railway. That yeah. if we get to the end of the year and we've shifted the dial on that in years to come, then 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 we've done what we set out to do. Brilliant. No, that's a really, really lovely way of putting it. Um, So the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Anthony, was it's obviously the NRM's 50th anniversary this year. So how are the two anniversaries working together for you? Are you doing joint celebrations? Are you doing different things? How's that going to work? We've had a number of activities because um, technically there's actually three uh, celebrations. There's three strands to our celebration, certainly for us um, at the National Railway Museum. There's Railway 200, which which overarches everything that we're involved with you know it's all it's all marvelous brilliant to be part of it uh, and that dovetails in regionally uh, with the Stockton and Darlington Railway 200 which is a festival in itself with again activities and things happening along the entire route of the line from Shildon and West Durham where it all starts down through Darlington down to Stockton and you know there's a whole range of fabulous activities there and festivals which we are part of and we have our own program which is also coming live very soon and uh, and, and likewise uh, NRM 50 uh, it's no um, accident that the National Railway Museum was opened on the 27th of September 1975 and likewise locomotion itself um, opened on the 27th of September 2004 so locomotion is 21 years old this year okay it doesn't quite fit with the 50s um, but it's again uh, a coming of age almost for the museum and to be part of railway 200 and SNDR 200 is really exciting so we've got involvement in all three uh, but also some of the some of the things themselves. So NRM 50, we've got our own birthday party over the um, anniversary weekend. I'm going to have to split myself at least three ways that weekend because I have no <laughs> idea. But it's 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 fantastic. I mean, going back going yeah. back to the merch, everybody likes a good plug, don't they? Good commercial uh, plug. Uh, locomotion models, which is part of our. Um, enterprises section at yeah. the railway museum uh, we have a set of uh, of special model railway wagons that's been done uh, railway 200 snDR 200 an hour and 50 oh, and, uh, so if you've got model railways you'll be wanting a, a set of those but you know again as Emma was saying it's very much looking towards community it's looking towards involvement and celebrating the railway we're very keen and again I'm ready for those hate letters this is not just a railway enthusiast event this is this is showcasing the railway this is talking to people who don't travel by train who don't necessarily send their goods by train and saying look the railway is still an important and valid piece of com- communications infrastructure whatever um i i did an interview a, a while ago and for somebody about Railway 200 and they wanted to talk about the past and they and they were very keen to almost try and trip me up and say how terrible the modern railways were and I said no look there are thousands of people working exceedingly hard on railway projects across the country to make sure that railway the railway has 200 years if not longer in the future you know we've talked about that massive history already behind us and you know there's no reason as to why we shouldn't have a fabulous history going forward but i think that's a really key message for all of us because you know we've attended events for the railway museum in the past at places like rail live where people have said what are you doing here because you do steam engines Uh, over the recent years we've now managed to change that and we've got our futures gallery for the future on, on 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 plan but you know railway 200 is really key for us to work with emma and her team and showcase the railway as a phenomenon and the railway as a force for the future. So last thing then, Emma, can you just tell us how can everybody find out what's happening in their area, what they can go to and how they can get involved? Um, Well, our our website, railway200.co.uk, is the place to go. It's our shop window on the celebrations. We have a map on there. Uh, There's over 180 events on there. So if you want to find something to visit, you can find out what's going on on our interactive map. 
Um, and we're really encouraging everyone to get involved personally or professionally and, and ultimately to become a history maker. Um, and so to consider, you know, what activities and events their organisations could get involved in under the umbrella of Railway 200. Would you like to perhaps do a charity fundraising activity and organised walk, for example, would be great. Uh, we have a, a, a newsletter that people can sign up to on our website. We're calling out for rail tales. We want to hear how the stories influence the rails influence people's lives again through our website. You can uh, submit your story. We have a toolkit, so it allows you to look at our messaging and branding and to, to use that as well. So there's there's loads of ways to get involved. Um, you know, speak to your stakeholders, have conversations about it, talk to your community rail partnerships. They've been an amazing um, network of got they've got some wonderful activities um, and events going on in your local area. So yeah, so bring it to the conversation and, and see where your imagination takes you. Amazing. That sounds really brilliant. Well, thank you both so much for coming on the show. And um, I'm sure we'll be talking to you again as the year goes on, as uh, as things start to unfold. So thank you ever so much. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.